What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use macros in Studio One 4 to improve your workflow. So I gotta be honest, I've been using Studio One since like 2012 and before that I was briefly on Logic and I would always see this macro functionality, but I was never curious enough to learn more. Now recently I was looking for a mechanical keyboard, a typing keyboard, and I realized that a lot of these keyboards have what they call macro buttons. Now in layman's terms, a macro is simply just an action that triggers another action or another set of actions, and in a keyboard, a dedicated macro button is simply just an empty button button that you can map and assign to do whatever you want. Now upon learning this, I realized that this is probably how the macros in a DAW also work and I immediately felt silly for not realizing this earlier. So with that being said, today I'm going to show you how you can use macros in Studio One 4 to improve your workflow and even show you some of the ones that I've created to help me get more done. Okay, so once you're in Studio One, if you head over to your top toolbar here, next to the quantize button, we get this weird symbol which I've yet to figure out what it is. But this is your macros button. If you click on it, you get presented with a wide selection of pre-built macros ready for you to use, and these range from selecting every third note, to increasing the velocity of a MIDI note by 10, to quantizing your notes by 1 16th or 1 8th or 1 4th, and even messing around with the note length. Now two things to remember. One is that these are just a small selection out of the many pre-built macros that Studio One has available for you to use, and I'll show you how to get to the rest a little later. But two, and most importantly, is that these are sort of like pre-built equations because developers have already gone into the back end and they've built their own specific chain of commands and bundle them into these macros here. Now, these are cool, but much like with anything, things get so much better whenever you customize them. So with that being said, let me show you some of the macros that I've built that have helped me get more done. To better demonstrate this. I'm going to record something for you guys real quick. Okay, so let's take a listen to this. Now that wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't great. But watch this. That was three buttons in about like five seconds. So let me explain what just happened. To me, one of the most important things when creating music is speed. The quicker that I can get an idea from my head to the software, the faster that I can keep it moving and be more creative without being bogged down too much with technology. This is also why what DAW you use is less important than how well you know how to use it, but that's a topic for a different video. So normally, and let me go back to the moment that I recorded these notes. Normally, whenever I record something, and I assume this happens to a lot of other people too, we're not the best piano players or whatever, so things don't come out perfect. So in a lot of times, we have to sit there and select all the notes and quantize to whatever you want. You might even mess around with the velocity, so... You'll do that, and if you're really meticulous, you might even mess around with the note length. And then, you know, in the end, you'll get something that sounds pretty good. Now, this is okay, but especially if you're in the zone and you just want to create, you don't want to sit there and have to manually deal with quantization or messing with velocity or note length. You just want to lay something down, see how it sounds, and keep it moving. So what I've done to make this specific process for me a lot quicker is I've started to use macros. So let's go over them real quick. Now, the first problem that I encountered is that whenever I'm recording, depending on where the cursor lands, I might be like really zoomed in or I may be really zoomed out. So what I've done is I mapped the letter I on my keyboard to give me an overview window of whatever I just played. So it doesn't matter if I'm really zoomed out, hit the letter I, I'm back to this. It doesn't matter if I'm really zoomed in, hit the letter I, and I'm back to the selection that I just played. Next, if I hit the letter O, it quantizes everything to 16th notes, and it even elongates the note length and makes it stop at the beginning of the next note. If I hit the letter P, the same thing happens, but instead of 16th notes, it quantizes everything to 32nd notes. If I hit the left bracket key, it sends everything to 100% velocity, and you can see that here. If I press the right bracket, it sends everything to 75% velocity. 
If I hit the forward slash, it sends everything to 50% velocity. From here, if I wanna fine tune even more, I can use the minus key or the plus key to increase or reduce the velocity of my notes by increments of five. Now, obviously this was just one very specific scenario where I used macros to help me improve my workflow. But the best part about this is that it's completely customizable to fit your needs. Okay, so now that you guys know how macros can potentially improve your workflow, let's go over how you can either recreate these or maybe create some of your own. So to do that, the first thing you wanna do is you want to head over to the Studio One drop down menu on the top left and go over to the Macro Organizer tab. Here you'll find the rest of the macros, some of which we've already seen on the macro toolbar up here, but this is also the place where you'll create new ones. Now you guys can go through these macros on your own, but I'm going to show you how I created the ones that I used earlier. But okay, the first one we're going to recreate is the zoom overview. So for that, hit the new button here, and here you can title it whatever you want. So I'm going to just do zoom test you can even add it to a group so i'm just going to type in zoom and you can even add a description if you want from here you want to type in select in the search bar and then go down to the edit button and we're going to hit select all and add that to our command chain and we're also going to select deselect all add that as well finally you're going to type in zoom and you're going to head all the way down to where it says zoom to selection add that as well finally make sure that the zoom command is in the middle of the first two that we added so move that up one that way it selects it all zooms to the selection and then deselects all the notes from here just hit okay and once you've done that you should see your macro here somewhere usually it's all the way at the bottom so here it is zoom test now the last step is to map that macro to a key on your keyboard alternatively you could also map it to a button and pin that button to the macros bar up here now to do that what you want to do is you want to go over to one of these pre-existing categories and right click it and now you don't want to click on the open space here because if you do, if I right click on that, all you'll be able to do is just align the buttons to the left, the right, or the center. So you want to click, right click on any one of these pre-existing categories and hit new group. Obviously, if your macro already fits into any one of these categories, then just hit new button. But because we're doing a zoom action, you want to hit a new group and then just rename that to zoom. From here, you want to click under that category and hit new button. Finally, you want to right click on that button, head over to assign macros and then find the macro that we just created so it should be at the bottom zoom test and there you go if you don't want to map it to a button on your macros toolbar you could always map it to a key on your keyboard so let's do that now so to do that all you simply have to do is go back over to your studio one drop down menu and this time head to keyboard shortcuts from here type in macros and then find the macro that we created earlier so this is it zoom test and then enter whatever key on your keyboard you want it to be assigned to. So I'm just gonna pick something. I'm gonna hit the letter or the number zero and hit assign and then okay. So now if I double click on my selection, let's go ahead and just zoom out to test it. If I hit zero, there we go. Let's zoom in zero, there we go. For the sake of this tutorial, let's also test out the button. So zoom test, perfect, there we go. Now let's go back over to the macro organizer real quick. And I'm going to show you guys how I created that quantized note length macro. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to hit new again. And we're going to do quantize test, uh, quantize. Now for this, what you want to do again is hit select or type in select. And then you're going to go into select all, add that into your command chain and deselect all, add that again. From here, I'm going to type in the word quantize in the search bar. And you're going to want to add a whatever quantization you want to apply to your notes with this command. In my case, I want to keep it at 1 16th. So I'm going to add that. Finally, the last thing to do is to make the notes uh, elongate themselves and stop whenever the next note begins. So to do that, type in musical fun yep musical function here and then you want to head over to length at that as well all right so now we just have to organize our commands so i'm going to go over to the quantize one move that one up and then go to the length one and move that one up as well that way now whenever we activate this macro the chain of command is select all quantize everything to 1 16th uh, fix the note length and then deselect everything. The very last step in this process is to double click on the length command. Once you're here, you're going to click on the legato and overlap correction button. Basically with this option, it's going to elongate your notes and make them stop at the beginning of the next note. So that way they don't overlap. So once you've done that, just hit okay and then okay again. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see that we have the newly created macro here. And all that's left to do is either to add it to a button on the macros toolbar or map it to a button on your keyboard. Last but not least, we have the velocity macro so for that go ahead and hit the new button again and this time all we're going to do is type in musical function 
and then that should pop up. So let's go over to velocity and add that. From here, double click on the velocity command and then set it to whatever you want. So hit set all two. And then in my case, I did one with 100, one with 75, and then one with 50. Obviously, you'd have to create three separate macros for each velocity percentage. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's do the one at 100. So I'm going to do 100, hit OK. And then just again, fill in your um, your titles and whatnot. So velocity test and then group velocity and then hit OK. From here again, just map it to either your macros toolbar or map it to a key on your keyboard. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Now, again, macros can be used in whatever way that you want. It doesn't even have to be MIDI. You can use it for audio as well. But hopefully now you have a new tool, a new method to help you get your ideas out quicker and be more creative. But as always, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already. But I'll see you guys on the next one.